Uh, hi everyone, no Anthony Sleep, Sleep Tano, Tano here, here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Black Dresses album, Laughing Fish. Yes, this is the newest album from experimental, alternative, uh, noise pop music duo Black Dresses. It's their seventh, I believe, and the follow-up to 2022's Forget Your Own Face. For the uninitiated, who are Black Dresses? What is up with their uh, wild, untamed, lo-fi indie potpourri sound, and why am I even reviewing this album? Well, uh, for one, I was excited to dive into this record because the duo is responsible for some of my favorite music over the past several years. Still, to this day, I am blown away by the songs and the production on 2020's Peaceful as Hell. It's a bold, chaotic, homespun album whose commentary on the cold and harsh and unforgiving world that we live in is something to behold. Plus, the album is way catchier than you'd expect for something that is this rough around the edges. The duo may have an unconventional appeal, but I do think there's clearly a lot of skill and creative ideas that go into their songs and their production choices. But more importantly, I think on an emotional level, Black Dress's music represents a rawness and a vulnerability uh, that is incredibly high. The way Ada and Debbie present their vocals on their record the way they wrestle with feelings around anxiety and depression, fear of judgment. As songwriters, I think they embrace fear and love and imperfection in a way that some artists are afraid to. So, of course, I was excited at first to see that Laughing Fish is Black Dress's biggest album so far in terms of size and scope. This thing has 22 tracks on it. But while the record does cover a lot of stylistic bases across its its 77 minute runtime, uh, the more I listened to it, the more I found the process of just experiencing this record to be kind of daunting. This album is also said to be the duo's final LP, so they could be using this as an opportunity to just get everything out there that's uh, left over in the vault that's worth sharing. Black Dress has also decided to pack this record with some of their most indirect song structures and slowest burners yet, like the eerie glitchy ambient pop intro that kicks the album off, and while uh, black dresses are no strangers to a slow start, uh, this seems maybe a bit too spaced out for something that would front one of their LPs. But following this, we have an even more interesting departure on Feel Something, which feels like the duo taking their usual mix of bedroom pop, noise rock, and indie freakisms, and applying it to uh, like some booming beats and groovy riffs that would fit underneath a 2000s industrial rock or alternative metal song. And while I don't love it, uh, it kind of works way more than it should. The following Cat Cup carries over a lot of these same aesthetics too, but I get a lot more out of the electro style beat breakdowns and uh, lyrics centered around being punished for uh, being different and veering outside of the norm. But yeah, this track kind of feels like the tortured angst of corn, but uh, brought into a different context. Next, Bad Veggies was kind of a big single for the record but it's a song that I just don't really find myself going back to because I think this really huge, loud, what sounds like a slowed down, pitched down clap kind of overtaking everything else in the mix uh, throws things off a bit. And a lot of the record from here contains uh, similarly surprising experiments, uh, unlikely sonic or stylistic combinations or shots in the dark, uh, some of which pan out, some of which don't. There's wound Wounded Animal, which is a surprisingly tender ballad for Black Dresses, which goes over great, in fact, and I love the way that Ada and Debbie's uh, very kind of lazy, chill vocal harmonies intertwine across the song. Meanwhile, Good Things Happen feels like a slight mismatch, like if you could take the harsh and groovy instrumental characteristics of a Nine Inch Nails song from back in the day, but throw some summery indie electro-pop synths on top of it, like M83 style. The duo Duo has definitely had sharper ideas than this one. Then Don't Forgive the World feels almost like accidental mindless self-indulgence in a way. While still sounding like typical black dresses fair, this erratic, electronically assembled noise rock and pop with searing screams, unforgiving distortion, and anthemic hook too. And I like the track a lot. I actually think it could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with many of the highlights from the duo's past records, but uh, it kind of makes 
this song stick out like a sore thumb, the fact that it is so cut and dry and so direct, because there are so many other songs on the LP that just aren't. Case in point, The World, which in the first leg kicks off in a way where it feels like we're going to get some off-kilter but fun electropop, but a chaotic beat switch reveals that we are in fact not going to get a big payoff or anything like that, and we're going to kind of detour into something uh, much darker and stranger that kind of fizzles out eventually. Then Pure Reality is even more winding, but somehow it's kind of hard not to admire how wild and multifaceted this track is, especially when it starts hitting with these big and juiced up 90s style riffs and drums that are a little grunge adjacent. There are even some honking horns on top of these guitars too. This is easily one of the most dense and arranged songs that Black Dresses have put out, because if anything really defines this album for the duo, and believe me, it's hard to uh, find much of any direction in this track list. It's seemingly that they're trying to take on new challenges, approaches. If any part of the record does have a consistent run, though, it's the midpoint, where, again, you get a good handful of tracks that bring these retro 90s alt and radio rock vibes that manages to fit really well into Black Dress's loose, flamboyant, volatile presentation, vocally and instrumentally. This passage of the record ends with I still see everything, which brings big Nine Inch Nails vibes as well, but eventually warms up into this ray of hope in the midst of the track list that sees a cloud with a silver lining. I mean, the song is very much about an ending, but uh, simultaneously making peace with that. Obviously, this track could be a reflection on the ending of the group and, you know, an attempt to kind of leave things on a positive note. If there's a section of the LP that I think really could have used uh, some work, it's the finish. I can't help but feel like this LP really could have ended with the song Magic Eye, which covertly feels almost like a statement on the album itself, as the lyrics are very much about not being able to see past something or uh, grasp an idea, a concept, a feeling, and instead of forcing it and driving yourself crazy over it, uh, just intuitively dancing along to the beat without overthinking things. And metaphorically painting this dynamic uh, with the use of, uh, you know, a magic eye optical illusion and having a hard time uh, being able to uh, see it and line it up with your eyes when you kind of see past it. Which, yeah, again, lyrically I think is a high point on the record, and I think this song is uh, pretty strong instrumentally too. But things kind of go down from here with tracks that uh, feel a little half-baked or are sort of gaudy and uh, needlessly cluttered. Yeah, rotation, that bass line, I mean, maybe on a Primus song, but here? Then it's probably fine. I mean, I know the duo's music tends to be uh, kind of messy intentionally, but even by Black Dress's usual standards, this track comes across kind of demo quality. The sonics of Champion in Decay are kind of fried to a fault. And the closing track, with its persistent whooping synthesizers, for whatever reason, just feels so unserious. And it just feels like they're trying too hard to lighten the mood for a track that's clearly going for something that is positive and kind of cutesy. I do think the sentiment of the song is respectable, though. It's all about being and becoming a better you, and uh, black dresses on this track uh, pretty much thank their audience and those in their lives who are really care about them and love them uh, while they are their uh, most authentic selves. Which, narratively, I think brings things full circle, especially since there are so many songs up until this point that deal in feelings of insecurity and discomfort and hesitation to be yourself because we exist in a very ignorant and hateful world. It's a valid point, but it's one I wish the duo got to a bit faster, as well as dug into a bit deeper. I do appreciate the versatile and bold highlights that Black Dresses create across this very long track list, but I would have rather had more cohesion coming off the record at the end of the day, more consistency too, because even though on some level with their 2022 record, uh, while I was let down a bit because that album was so short, uh, simultaneously, it was all killer, no filler. Conversely, Laughing Fish has a bigger problem, uh, the opposite problem, in that it's a total overload, and there are too many pockets across the runtime of this record that just drag, which is why I'm feeling a decent to strong six on this one. Transition. Have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best. You're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up for the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, black dresses forever.